Hi, Mark Diaz here for 2DAnimation101.com. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to animate keyframes. Okay, first, you need to understand that everything in Moho is animatable. If you can change it, you can animate it. Okay, how about the fill and the stroke? Well, can you change them? Yes, that means you can animate it. Everything that can be changed can be animated. Okay, so in this lesson, let me show you how to actually do animation. First, let me show you with the transform points tool. Right now, as you can see, I have three shapes and also three layers, each layer corresponding to each shape, okay? So let me select first the square and I'm going to animate the position. With the transform points tool, I click on the square and now that I have it selected, I can go to frame number one. Right now I'm on frame zero. That's designer mode. If I want to start animating, I must go to frame one. Let me click here. Now I'm on frame one. I can tell because that's the number showing here, number one. If I go to, for example, frame 24, it shows here, frame 24. Okay, let's go to frame one. And now if I click on the shape, it will add a keyframe. Boom. You see? That added a keyframe in the timeline. That means it's going to start animating this shape. Okay, so if I go to frame 24 and then just move it to the other side, now I have two keyframes. That means that I now have an animation. Let me show it to you. I go to the start, I play, and the square moves from one side to the other. Let me play it again. You see, very simple animation. What if I want the square to take longer to get from this spot to that point? Well, very easy. All I have to do is change the keyframes in time. Right now it takes one second. If I want it to take three seconds, then all I have to do is move that keyframe and click and drag. I select it, I click and drag, and now it takes longer. It takes three seconds instead of one second. You see, let me go to the start and play. Now it takes three seconds. You see? Now what if I want to animate the triangle? Well, if I want to start animating the triangle, first I have to select the layer, and now I can start animating. What I'm going to do with this shape is I'm going to animate the points. I will animate that point, okay? But first I have to put the cursor in the correct position in the timeline. So right now I'm on frame 117. Let me go to the beginning to frame one. And now if I click on that point, that adds a new keyframe. Let me go to, let's say, frame 48. Now I move that point. And actually, how about if I move a couple more points, like this? They are being animated. So again, everything is being animated. Now let me show you something interesting. In the timeline, you see two bars. One bar represents the whole layer. Okay, the gray bar and the red one, which is this one represents the keyframes of my selection in the workspace. In this case, that keyframe represents that point. Okay, and as you can see, when I went to the very, very beginning, I didn't add keyframes for this point or that point. I only have keyframe for this point, you see? And that's why the layer is showing me that keyframe, okay? So let me prove it to you. I'm going to pick this point and this one has the keyframe, but not the others, okay? Okay, so the two concepts I want you to understand is one bar, the one with the gray keyframes, 
represents the keyframes of the selected layer in your layers panel. And the red keyframes represent whatever you have selected in the workspace. Okay? So, the red is whatever you have selected in the workspace and the gray represents whatever you have selected in your layers panel. Okay? Now, to finish off with this lesson, let me show you how to copy and paste keyframes. Uh, this is super important because it's a way to improve your animation and actually control, have more control over everything you are animating. Okay? For example, let me select the circle. First, I have to select it on the layers panel. And now, with my transform points tool, I'm going to click on it and that adds a keyframe, okay? Then I go to maybe second four, right? And this will move to here. Now, what if I want this circle to stop in the middle of the way, maybe around second two, and then stop right there, and then be stop, be still, very still, and then from second three to four, keep moving. How do I do that? Well, let me show you. First, I want this layer to stop right there, the circle. So if I want to add a keyframe there, I just click on it. And that adds a keyframe. Now, right now, this is the animation I have. It's moving and then it makes a little stop, but I don't want to keep it moving. So what do I do? I go to frame 72, that's second three. And I'm going to copy those keyframes and paste them on second three. How? Very easy. All I have to do is select all the keyframes, then copy and paste. And that's how I maintain that position for one second. Okay? Let's preview the animation. It's going to move and then it stops and then it continues moving. Okay? Let me go back. I'm going to play it. Okay. Now, as you can see, when you preview the animation, it goes with very low resolution, with polygons. Let me play it so you can see. You see, that's not a circle. So, my way to previewing the animation with better resolution is by selecting the eyedropper tool. This is actually to pick colors. I'm picking color green, I'm picking color red, and I'm picking color blue. But when you have this tool activated, it gives you a better resolution of all your work. And that's how I use it. Let me play it with the eyedropper tool selected. You see? And now the circle stops and then keeps moving. You see? It moves, then stops, and then keeps moving. Very good. Okay, so now you know how to animate using keyframes. You know that everything can be animated and you also know that the gray keyframes represent whatever you have in the layers panel, okay? And the red keyframes represent whatever you have selected in the workspace, okay? And you also know that to hold positions, you can use copy and paste. That's a way to manipulate your animation, to have more control. Okay, very good. Now, let's move on to the next lesson in which we are going to prepare our character for the walk cycle. We have to do some improvements to our rigging so we can create a very advanced and organic walk cycle. See you there.